Hello and welcome to the channel everybody. In this video I want to talk about what is the cheapest way of getting into VR. What are the minimum specs of your PC to get into VR? Now I thought this would be an obvious one that I wouldn't need to do a video on. However, turns out not so much. Minimum specs are pretty much what your headset supplier says are the minimum specs. Uh, but even then I probably wouldn't go off the minimum specs. I'd probably say go towards the recommended and stick to around that if not a little more. I'm a part of a lot of different uh, VR groups on Facebook and all that, and I see people all the time, literally all the time, like multiple times a day, will this PC work with VR? Will this PC work, work with Windows Mixer? Will it work with Oculus? Check the minimum specs. Check the recommended specs. Your 11 year old PC will probably not work. And if it does, not very well. Your experience is not gonna be very good. I mean, just yesterday I had this guy with his 11 year old face. Will this work? Just no, it won't. Trust me, I've tried. Then he put up a few minutes later. Oh, I found this used PC on whatever site. Will this work? It's just a never ending circus. Now that I got that rant out of the way. What is the cheapest way of getting into VR? If you're looking at getting into VR for the first time, um, you, you're going to need two main things. You're going to need a VR headset of your choice. Uh, chances are if you're looking at getting into it cheaply, that's probably going to be a Windows Mixed Reality headset, probably like my Lenovo Explorer here. One of the cheapest VR headsets you can probably get on the used market for a few hundred bucks. Uh, depending where you live, uh, Australia, I've seen them go for about 300 bucks. In the US, about 100 bucks. So, you know, depends where you live. Not particularly expensive. The second thing you need is a PC to power that. Now, that will depend on the headset you choose. If you go for an Oculus CV1 or something like that, that's obviously going to change a little bit, but it's probably similar. You know, they're, they're all similar specs. So I'll just bring up the Windows Mixed Reality specs. So the, this is straight from the Microsoft website as of the 30th of the 3rd, 2020. And I'm not going to lie, the Windows web, Microsoft website is a little confusing here and it has Windows Mixed Reality and Windows Mixed Reality Ultra. So some people could be looking at the normal Windows Mixed Reality and thinking, hey, sure, I have a laptop or something that'll do uh, NVIDIA 965M discrete GPU or a 7200U mobile processor. These are the absolute minimum. And even then, you can't play games on. Anyone that's searching this here, I mean, probably watching now, is probably going to want to play Half Life Alex, Contractors VR super hot VR and all those sort of stuff. Now every single game is going to have its minimum specs as well on top of these. So if you look at these minimum specs here 
And, and, and you want to play Half-Life, Alex? You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be wasting your money. Now, when I bought this Lenovo Explorer, there, were, there was actually second-hand, um, by the way. Where are we? It was kind of new, but it was second-hand. Um, they, the family I bought it off bought it and then wouldn't work with their POV laptop. And then when I went to pick it up from them, that I got for a steal off them, the dad of the family was like, oh, it turns out we don't have the supercomputer it needs to run. And I'm, I said straight, I know I was buying a product phone. You don't need a supercomputer to run VR. Like the dad was very, I don't want to swear, but you get that. Just his whole attitude and everything was just, it really annoyed me. But anyway, let me, let me get to the point here. If you want to be playing games like Half-Life, you really want to look towards what the Windows Mixed Reality Ultra is here as the minimum. Not the recommended, the minimum for Windows Mixed Reality Ultra. As stated up here, which people tend to look over, with Windows Mixed Reality Ultra, you get some additional capabilities and features, crisper visuals, and a higher refresh rate, more apps and experiences, including the most graphic intensive games. That's, that's what you need. Ultra, ultra, not the normal, the ultra. And keep in mind, you do want to have a good experience in VR. You don't want to be turning your head around and then just jump, 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 jump. I mean, you're going to get motion sick, trust me. I've tried with cheaper stuff, and it's just not a good experience. So the minimum specs here uh, for Windows Mixed Reality Ultra is uh, i5 4590, fourth gen desktop, quad core better. AMD Ryzen 5 1400, 3.4 gigahertz desktop, quad core or better, better or better. 8 gig DDR3 RAM or better. To be honest, I'd probably recommend better. 10 gig free space, compatible GPUs, uh, 1060 or greater. AMD 470, 570 or greater. HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPoint, uh, DisplayPort 1.2. USB 3 Type A or Type C, Bluetooth 4.0, etc. So I would be looking to that as an absolute minimum. Now, in the cupboard here behind me, I do have a Ryzen 1200, which is less than the minimum specs here. And I have ran a Radeon RX 570, which again is the minimum here, uh, but I overclocked that baby and uh, even overclocked, it wasn't very good. And uh, with the Radeon RX 570, it was okay. But again, you, you just don't want to be going at the minimum. You get... Uh, it's complicated because you get some people online and they say, yeah, I can run VR and I have these PC specs. Yes, it'll run, but I guarantee if, if you upgraded some of the components on your PC and ran reasonably above the minimum specs, of the Ultra, you would probably see quite a significant difference that you don't really notice running your slightly under-specced PC. And let me tell you, when I was running VR with my Ryzen 1200, I thought it was me yeah, okay. I thought, yeah, it ran. And I played around in VR with that 1200. And while I did notice, even in the 
default Windows Mixed Reality Home that you have. Just fast movement sometimes just didn't quite keep up. And that was with 16 gig of RAM too, by the way. Um, and yeah, I didn't mind my 1200. But the thing that made me upgrade from the 1200 was VR. And this was like a little while ago now. But anyway, my point is, please try to keep to these specs. Like the, the Windows Mixed Reality Ultra Specs, if you're wanting to do gaming, you don't necessarily need to buy a whole new computer unless you do. You don't necessarily need the greatest PC or the most expensive parts in able to, to play VR. And I think I'm going to do a video on this maybe next week. I'm actually going to virtually build a VR PC that I would probably recommend is value for money right now. So subscribe for that. Um, but let me tell you what I'm currently running for VR. Now, now I have this PC here and my simulator PC that you've probably seen in other videos. Unless, of course, this is the first video you've seen of mine. Um, I have a simulator PC. I run VR on both these PCs. My main computer here is a Ryzen 2700 that I do most of my editing on and just general browsing and all this sort of stuff. That's my main PC. Main PC. Um, Ryzen 2700 with 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. Uh, the graphics card is a gigabyte 1660 super six gig um, one of the big gigabyte ones on an asus b450 plus board i think it is in no way is it massively expensive it is a reasonably cheap pc but it does gaming no worries it does editing no worries it can do like this PC is pretty good for the low price you kind of pay for it. Um, this is a bit over minimum specs. Do you need this? Probably not. But I would say as a graphics card, the 16 Super 60 Super isn't bad um, for the price. Although the 5600 XT that's just come out uh, isn't a bad choice either for a little bit more. Um, my other PC that I'm using VR, but I, I use an Oculus Rift S on that PC on the simulator. Um, I'm, I've only got a Ryzen 5 2600 on that PC, uh, which is a pretty cheap value. And if you're in the US at the moment, I think there's the Ryzen 1600 AF which is cheap. I think it's like $100 cheap, like US cheap, which has the same performance as a 2600, which is pretty much the same as I'm running in my simulator. Uh, but the simulator is running a Radeon 5700 8 gig graphics card, which is a bit more than this PC here. Um, that's also running 16 gig of uh, 3200 megahertz RAM, but on an X 370 gaming pro uh, motherboard but if you were to run like a, a 2600 or a 1600 af uh, like in my other pc and then run something like a 1660 super or a, a 5600 xt graphics card uh, with 16 gigs of ram like that is a good pc to upgrade to uh, if you're currently under that specs, uh, chances are you probably already have a PC. You might be able to utilize the power supply, hard drives, etc. You don't necessarily need SSDs and all that to run VR. And so maybe you might just need to buy a motherboard. That's if you're not running something like a Ryzen 1200 like what I was, for instance. Then you could just maybe upgrade the CPU. 
you probably already have the RAM. Maybe you only have 8 gig. Get another 8 gig stick. It's in saying that the minimum even on Windows Mixed Reality Ultra is still 8 gig. But again, I'd, I'd probably recommend 16, 16 gig. And when you think about it, VR really isn't that expensive because you already have most of the components anyway. Maybe you don't know how to build a computer. I mean, that's why we got YouTube. Learn, learn. It, it's not that difficult. Yeah, you know, I built my first PC when I was nine years old. If I can do it when I when I'm nine, I'm sure you can do it when you're at your age. <laughs> Just as a an example of how well uh, even this PC can play VR, you, you're more than welcome to check out the more than an hour long video I posted yesterday playing Half Life Alex on the Lenovo Explorer. And it wasn't bad. Um, whoops. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. The performance was quite good. And the thing with going a bit over the minimum specs as well, every year we were advancing and, and you don't want to go to the minimum now because you're just going to be out of the game again in a year's time. If you can't quite afford new stuff, maybe go to the second hand market. But a lot of people just buy some good, reasonably or near new graphics cards on uh, eBay and stuff uh, reasonably cheap. Maybe that's an option for you. I've done it before, but there is obviously those concerns of warranty, uh, how the card's been treated, all that stuff. But yeah, that is my cheapest way of getting into VR currently. Uh, probably a cheap Windows Mixed Reality has it, or, or an Oculus. Uh, Rift uh, CV1 with all the sensors and all that around. Um, they're, they're probably the two cheapest ways to get into VR at the moment with a reasonable PC to the minimum specs of the game you're playing or game you're wanting to play. AMD has some really good budget gaming CPU and graphics stuff out at the moment. Even a uh, RX 588 gig is cheap now. Um, maybe even an RX 590 if you can find one for a similar price. I'm just editing this video and then <laughs> I planned on this video being about 10 minutes long and turns out I ranted for over 30 minutes. And because of that, my camera only records for 30 minutes and therefore it cut off my ending so I have to refilm this so if you're watching all the way through thank you very much and uh, I'll cut this video down somewhat I'll probably still keep in the hand because you know I felt the passion for it at the time and maybe it needs to be out there maybe it doesn't but anyway thanks for watching this video everybody hit that like button if you liked it subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next video.